Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This week, Hyundai sent me the 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy to review here on the channel. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to answer a question I get quite frequently on any of my Santa Fe content. Which would I choose, the hybrid or the 2.5 liter turbo? So this is not gonna be an in-depth comparison between each of these two vehicles beside me because they are not the equivalent in terms of features, options, and trims, but I do wanna give you my overall driving impressions because they will accomplish that task, uh, again, between the hybrid and the 2.5 liter turbo, uh, because I think they do drive quite differently and uh, might tailor to a different type of buyer, although I think there are some people out there that will end up cross-shopping these two vehicles. Another reason this is going to be a valid comparison, not only for this current generation, but also the future generation here just around the corner is the fact that that these are the only two powertrains that are going to be offered with the next generation Santa Cruz here in the United States. So the 1.6 liter turbo with the hybrid and electric motor setup or the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine paired to the eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. So Hyundai has confirmed these are the only two powertrains that are going to be powering the next generation Santa Fe here in the United States. Of course, the plug-in hybrid will be available in Europe and some other parts of the country. And I believe some of the like naturally aspirated 2.5 liter uh, four cylinders will be available outside of the US as well. But uh, this is gonna be hopefully a valid comparison for anybody looking at this generation or of course the upcoming next generation as well. Now, before we get into driving each of these vehicles, there are a few important notes that I do want to mention. Now, number one, the hybrid is not offered in the calligraphy trim. So if you want any of the features that are in that package or some of the nicer exterior with the paint match trim, the Napa leather on the inside, et cetera, you cannot do that. The top trim in the hybrid is going to be the limited, at least for this current generation. We still don't know all of the technical specs as far as the next generation goes, as they might allow you to choose the calligraphy in either engine option for all we know. Uh, but just note for this generation, the hybrid tops out the limited. Now, number two, what is your primary type of driving? Each of these two vehicles beside me don't have too much of a different highway MPG rating, but they do vary quite a lot in the city. So if you're primarily a city driver, you might wanna consider the hybrid solely for the fuel economy figures, um, or you might wanna consider the 2.5 liter turbo just for its performance benefits. Uh, but that is obviously up to you in your driving style, but that is something to consider. And number three, that kind of goes along with the overall powertrains. The hybrid uses the six speed torque converted automatic for the transmission where the 2.5 liter turbo uses the eight speed wet dual clutch. So these are gonna drive just a little bit differently and I'll give you my impressions once we get out on the roadway, but I can already tell you they are gonna be a little bit of a different driving style. And along with that, the hybrid is rated to tow up to 2000 pounds with trailer brakes and the 2.5 liter turbo is rated up to 3500 pounds with trailer brakes. So you do get an extra 1500 pounds of towing capacity here with the turbo option. Uh, so that is another thing to consider if you have maybe like a small single axle boat, uh, something on the lighter weight side of things that you do want to tow occasionally is that uh, this one is rated up to 3,500 pounds where the hybrid maxes out at 2,000. So with all that information in mind, let's not waste any more time. Take a look and drive each of these two vehicles behind me and uh, give you my overall driving impressions. So I think we're gonna start out driving the 2.5 liter turbo because I have been driving that for the last few days. So I have a better understanding of how it drives. Although I have driven the hybrid a several times, it's always been on the shorter side of things. So let's go ahead and start with the 2.5 liter turbo, then jump into the hybrid. And I think this will be a good comparison because not only have I been driving this vehicle just for a few days now, I just got out of a different manufacturer's hybrid. Uh, so it'll be interesting to compare the Santa Fe to that vehicle as well. So let's go ahead and jump inside. Make sure check out some other videos I have here on the channel if you guys are interested specifically about features, walk-arounds, anything like that as far as the Santa Fe goes because I have a ton of content on this vehicle here on the channel and I really do think highly of it for the most part. Of course, every vehicle does have some other quirks and features, but I think overall the Santa Fe is a great choice for a mid-size two-row SUV. So I'm gonna keep this drive fairly short, um, go on my normal route, maybe about a 10 to 15 minute drive, depending on traffic and everything like that. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. That's sweet. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of an acceleration run here. <laughs> yeah, and immediately, um, I can just tell you one of the reasons that you'll want the 2.5 liter turbo is going to be for the performance. It is quite impressive all the performance that this vehicle has uh, considering its size, weight and everything. And I think that just goes to show how much torque is available from the 2.5 liter turbo. So 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque, very quick to accelerate, tons of torque below 3000 RPM as well, uh, which is typically where you'll be driving on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think that is really the strong suit 
for the turbo engine option in the Santa Cruz. And I have to say, going into this drive, I was um, not a little bit hesitant about the dual clutch, but I was interested to see how it would perform because I myself have a vehicle with the seven speed dry dual clutch. And I will say it's not the best transmission out there. Um, it has hesitations. Sometimes, you know, the shifts are smooth. Sometimes they're crisp. Other times they're fairly sloppy. So as a whole, I was very interested to see how the eight speed would do. And I have to say it is a huge improvement over that seven speed I am used to driving on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really haven't noticed any um, poor shift quality out of this transmission. So um, it'll be interesting to see on the long-term how this transmission holds up over time. And uh, as there gets more miles on many vehicles out there, because it is still a relatively new engine and transmission combination. It's only been around for three to five years, depending on the vehicle. So I would say there's still some time before it proves itself in terms of reliability and just the overall longevity. But I have to say I'm quite impressed. And I think so far so good for the most part um, across many of the vehicles that do offer this combination out there. Now, in terms of the Santa Fe in general, the platform is a little bit more on the sporty side, I would say, especially for the limited and calligraphy with this engine. Um, because it does offer a ton of performance, but the suspension tuning and some of the other dynamics of the vehicle definitely lend itself to being um, more on the sporty side of things rather than ultra luxury, ultra comfort all the time. So I think that's another reason to get the Santa Fe if you do want kind of a more dynamic handling vehicle. Now what's nice with both of these vehicles is they do offer a sport mode, so that will change the throttle response, maybe some of the shift tuning and the overall performance. So passing power, downshift, and tons of torque on tap. And going back into the smart drive mode, which I've spent most of my time in with this vehicle, um, the dual clutch, if you've never been in a vehicle outside of a normal traditional torque converted automatic, I will say it is something to get used to because depending on what speeds you are coming up to a stop or pulling away from a complete stop, there is just a very slight different feeling um, once the transmission you know, starts to engage, selects the first gear, and then goes on, you know, of course, to start accelerating. And then once you get accelerating, the shifts themselves are going to be, um, I would say, more crisp than that of a torque converted automatic, where it instantly selects the next gear. The tachometer immediately shifts down to a lower RPM because it did select a higher gear. And uh, I would just say it's a more dynamic experience in that regard versus a normal traditional torque converted automatic. Now, of course, those transmissions can be sporty depending on which application and which manufacturer they are from. I would say as far as the Hyundai transmission goes, the uh, dual clutch is definitely gonna be the sportier of the two, which fits the 2.5 liter turbos characteristics. I think they make for a great combination in that regard. So uh, just know if you wanna look at the Santa Fe, definitely test drive the 2.5 liter turbo as well as any of their uh, powertrains you are interested in because they do drive quite differently even though the platform and the chassis themselves uh, might be quite similar. And I guess to go along with the 2.5 liter turbo, you are automatically forced into the limited or the calligraphy trims in this current generation. So that means you get most of the available features and options available on the Santa Fe lineup. This one being the calligraphy offers everything that the Santa Fe has to offer, including the full color heads up display, the Napa leather seating surfaces, uh, the silver accent buttons here on the steering wheel and the doors, which just make it look a little bit more premium than the one that we'll be hopping into. Uh, but again, all Santa Fe's, even the you know SE, SEL's offer a ton of equipment for the money. But I know some people out there don't necessarily want everything that the vehicles have to offer. So do keep that in mind. Turbo option starts with the limited and then goes up to the calligraphy. And we just came up to a stop here and you can see the engine did do the stop start functionality, which you can turn off manually here on the center console. However, you have to do it every time you do restart the engine, which does get a bit annoying. So I think that is another differentiating factor is that um, the hybrid can sit with the engine staying off only using the high voltage battery system uh, to power the AC and just be an overall smoother operation, more efficient operation. We're here in the turbocharge option. Um, obviously you can turn the engine off for short periods of time. Uh, but the AC might not keep up and it will kick back on the engine uh, after just a few seconds. And again, you can see I'm not even exceeding 3,000 RPMs to accelerate here on the interstate. 
man, I mean, the performance out of this engine is just phenomenal. Um, and you can get a little bit of turbo whistle or turbo noises depending on um, you know what throttle and what RPM the engine is at, which is very cool. Now, I know a lot of people in this segment of vehicle don't care to hear all of those engine noises, but I think as an enthusiast, um, you definitely get a little bit of extra enjoyment out of the turbo noises. And just showing you quickly some of the driver assistance technology, both of these will have highway drive assist. Um, not the second version with the automated lane change functionality, but the normal one. Uh, so you can see it does have the lane fall assist, centers you in the lane, and uh, overall works very well. I would say it bounces a little bit less between the lines as long as they are marked well on the roadway uh, than some of the other vehicles I have tested from other manufacturers. Of course, it gives you a warning to keep your hands on the steering wheel, which is always the safe thing to do. But yeah, as a whole, I would say the safety systems and the overall volume here on the interstate is uh, very low and very good as a whole. And going around this turn, pushing the Santa Fe just a little bit harder than the average person would, the overall balance and just chassis dynamics is just one of the things that um, really surprised me with this vehicle. You know, going around the uh, off ramps here, it just has very relatively little body roll, body lean um, that you aren't expecting from a vehicle that has such high ground clearance and you know sits up barely high. So I think that is one of the aspects that surprised me just about the platform as general. Now, as we finish up this drive, one of the aspects I do want to touch on is the fuel economy with this turbo. Um, over my uh, about five days so far with the vehicle, um, I've done mostly city in town type of driving, kind of a representative of this loop. And uh, I am averaging just over 21 MPG in my driving. And that is about what the city rating is with this engine option. So I wouldn't say I am not meeting the overall um, EPA estimates. I would say I am because I'm doing mostly city driving. Uh, but I'd say if you are a more aggressive driver, kind of lean heavy on the throttle, just expect um, somewhere around you know, 20, 21, 22 MPG in combined type of driving. Now, if you're out on the highway doing only interstate cruising, I would say you get into the mid, maybe about 27 MPG range, depending on what speeds, the overall ambient conditions and such like that. So I guess my overall final impressions of the turbo engine option are gonna be this. Powerful, tons of torque on tap. The shifts are very smooth, although the dual clutch does provide a slightly different feeling and sensation from that of a normal torque converted automatic. And outside of that, the rest of the characteristics of the Santa Fe should be shared across both the hybrid and the turbo. Um, the handling is very good, dynamic feeling, overall great size on the inside for just about any body type, tons of features and amenities. I think the biggest drawback of the turbo is going to be the fuel economy and just the MPG figures you uh, experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll go ahead and leave it in smart dry mode since that's what I spent most of my time with over there with the turbo option. Get the AC cooling, then we'll go ahead and uh, shut down that a little bit. Uh, we do have a fairly low high voltage battery system, so that may impact how much the vehicle is going into battery only power, but hopefully we will recharge that fairly quickly. Anyways, I can see we are recharging the battery already. We'll go ahead and do the same acceleration run here. Put it in sport mode for you guys. See the shifts just feel like slightly more delayed, but still performance is very good. I would say this is just a hair slower than the turbo engine option. Still much, much better than that of the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder. And immediately one of the differences behind the wheel of the hybrid is going to be the digital gauge cluster. Um, does have different graphics uh, specific to the actual hybrid because it does show you the charge, eco, and the power uh, tachometer, if you will, on the right side with the traditional speedometer on the left. And bringing up the dedicated hybrid pages here on the infotainment system, you can see it'll tell you where the battery and all the power is flowing from the electric motors, the high voltage battery pack, as well as the gasoline internal combustion engine. So very cool, tells you your average fuel economy for uh, the trip or maybe the entire lifetime with the vehicle. There it goes, just went into electric only as we're slowing down behind this truck here. And hopefully you guys saw that on the infotainment system. 
The transition between hybrid and electric is very seamless in most new hybrids these days, so that is very impressive. And it, same goes for the Santa Fe. As we continue to slow down, didn't even feel the internal combustion engine turn off, uh, but we are recharging the battery, decelerating, and being powered by battery only. And much like any hybrid out there, you can hear um, audibly when the engine turns on and off. This one I would say is no different than the other manufacturer that I showcased here last week on the channel. Make sure to check those videos out if you guys haven't already. But operation between the two feels very similar. The only difference with the Santa Fe versus some of the other competitors on the market is going to be the fact that this uses a six-speed torque converted automatic transmission uh, versus a CVT type, uh, which may be just a hair more efficient in the grand scheme of things, but I think the six-speed uh, makes the overall driving experience feel much more engaging, more like a traditional vehicle out there. We can feel the shifts. They're not harsh by any means, but you do feel the shifts between gears. Uh, so personally, I favor a normal torque converted automatic or even a dual clutch in certain applications uh, like the Elantra hybrid, but uh, over that of a CVT type transmission but that is one of the big differentiators uh, from Hyundai from some of the other manufacturers out there yeah overall performance nothing to complain about the 1.6 liter turbo is very torquey in other applications and it overall it is really no different here in the Santa Fe so yeah I mean I have to say they are both quite good options and I really don't notice off the bat any suspension or uh, handling difference between the two vehicles. This one again rides on 19 inch alloy wheels so a slightly different profile tire. This one might be just a little bit heavier as a whole as well although I don't know for a fact uh, given this doesn't have a dual clutch and it doesn't have a, a larger four cylinder but I would imagine based on the high voltage battery pack and the electric motor this one would be just a little bit heavier than the normal internal combustion Santa Fe's so that may have an impact on overall dynamics but feels great to me. Ride quality is still very good, very quiet on the interior. And one thing worth mentioning, I guess, in the hybrid versions of Hyundai vehicles is they do offer a driver-only climate control setting. So if you go ahead and push that, it will shut off all the other vents inside the vehicle and prioritize only the driver climate controls. Now, obviously, that might not maintain the optimal interior temperature that you have the climate control set to, but it shouldn't be an issue for the driver's seat, uh, given you are the only one in the vehicle. So when you select that, it'll blow the cool air via the vents on you and uh, really should be a little bit more efficient than running the HVAC controls for the entire interior cabin. So I think that is a cool feature. I think there's some other hybrids out there on the market that do have that option as well, but uh, that's one thing that does stand out to me uh, back to back in these two Santa Fe's. And one thing I do like about hybrid vehicles in general is that even though, like I said, the gas internal combustion engines have the engine stop start. So once you come to a complete stop at a stoplight, it will turn off the engine for a short period of time to save gas. The uh, hybrid vehicles do so earlier while you're already decelerating to a stop and only using the high voltage system. Uh, so once you're already coming to a stop, the engine has been off for a period of time already. So you really don't notice any hesitation, lurch inside the vehicle, or you don't just feel the engine shutting down, uh, transfer through the cabin and all the engine mounts and everything like that. So I think that is a advantage of hybrid vehicles in general is that the overall transition between the gas and electrification is smoother than engine stop start systems. Say about 40% throttle. Yeah. Handling feels very good here in the hybrid, even with the additional weight. Yeah, definitely more than the average Santa Fe driver would do. But man, super composed, super planted. Now, one thing that is worth pointing out, especially getting out of the uh, hybrid vehicle that I did last week here on the channel, and that is the Hyundai vehicles typically don't have a dedicated EV button. So you can't be only powered, even at very low speeds like that vehicle, um, under 25 miles an hour with only electricity. They just don't allow you that option. The vehicle will determine itself whether or not there is enough uh, power in the high voltage system to power the vehicle, say at 15, 20, 25 miles an hour or whatever, like we are traveling here at 
what, 44 miles an hour in electric only. So it will determine that dynamically itself and you don't have any control with the controls inside of the vehicle uh, to tell it to only use the high voltage system, which is a little bit of a bummer, especially if the battery pack is capable of doing such, but I understand why they might wanna do it just to optimize overall efficiency inside the vehicle. And another thing I've noticed here on this quick drive is that the Santa Fe doesn't transition from gas to fully electric as quickly as the vehicle I had last week here on the channel. So that vehicle, you lift off the throttle completely and in the right conditions, immediately it'd go into battery or electric power only. We're here in the Santa Fe, I would say there's just a couple second delay uh, from when you would expect it to go into electric um, and then transitioning back into the gas. So that's again, a small thing, not really anything to complain about, um, but just something I noticed, especially getting out of that vehicle just a few days ago. So I guess as we wrap up our quick test drive between the two, what do I get out of the hybrid Santa Fe? Well, pretty seamless operation, very efficient as a whole, still a lot of power on tap, uh, but not quite as torquey as that 2.5, uh, even with the electric motor and the turbocharged four cylinder. Six speed automatic is a little bit um, slower to respond than that of the eight speed dual clutch. Again, torque converted automatic versus a dual clutch, just kind of a inherent thing there. Uh, but as a whole, I would say, yeah, very efficient, very smooth. The platform and handling characteristics feel very similar between the two, so no major difference. All of the interior and actual you know, features and stuff are going to be the same as long as you are comparing two equal trim levels between the hybrid and the turbo. So yeah, pretty uh, similar in the grand scheme of things. That They just go about it totally different ways, but give you very similar outcomes in some regards in terms of the overall power output. Although I will say um, noticeably better MPG, even here uh, being fairly aggressive in the hybrid system. Uh, so I'd say if you wanna prioritize efficiency and fuel economy, the hybrid is certainly the way to go, especially for a combination of city and highway uh, mixed type of driving versus you know only interstate where the turbo might do okay in some cases. But I think as a whole, you're gonna get better fuel economy across the board here in the hybrid for sure. And one little interesting thing that I just noticed here at the bottom is a little fuel economy bar that dynamically moves here in that blue section, goes from zero to 75 MPG, where in the turbo model, it goes from zero to 50. So 50 is the max, we're here in the hybrid at 75. And uh, I definitely think, you know, on deceleration or whenever the vehicle is being powered by EV, um, it will be definitely pegged over 50 as we are now, traveling right around 60 miles an hour. So. That was just something I noticed down there as far as that little fuel economy bar goes is much higher here in the hybrid.